Hi, I'm Josh. This time we're going to set up Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, or an Elk stack, to work with Snort3 logs. This will help us visualize our alerts and better keep track of what's happening on a network. Just like our Snort3 install video, we're going to use more Docker containers. This time we'll be using a Docker Compose file that runs our Snort3 container and an Elk container that is available on Docker Hub. If you'd rather set this up from scratch, you can just follow the instructions put together by Russ Combs at the link included below. We've once again included a few scripts to make starting and using our Docker containers nice and easy. The first script is start.sh. This script will start up the Docker containers as described in our docker compose.yaml file. The second script is interact snort.sh, which allows us to interact with the snort3 container. Our final script is interact elk.sh, which allows us to interact with our elk container. Because of the memory requirements for Elasticsearch, there are two settings that need to be configured on your host. The first is to make sure that Docker can use at least four gigabytes of RAM. The process to do this can be found in Docker's documentation. The second is changing the value of vm.max map count. The process is a little different depending on your operator. Linux users should run the following command, sysctl w vm.maxmapcount equals 262144. This will set the value for your currently running session. If you want that setting to be persistent, just add the following line to your etsy sysctl.conf, vm.maxmapcount equals 262144. Mac users that are running Docker for macOS will need to run a couple commands. First, screen library containers com.docker.docker data vms 0 tty. Press enter again and then run sysctl w vm.maxmapcount equals 262144. If you're running Docker Toolbox on Windows or Mac OS, you'll have to run the following commands. Docker machine ssh, and then sudo sysctl w vm.maxmapcount equals 262144. Now your system should be prepared to run these containers. To get our container started, you want to run the start.sh script. It'll take a couple seconds for everything to get up and running but you should be able to jump right into our snort3 container by running our interact snort.sh script. Once you're in the snort3 container, you'll want to navigate to home snorty examples logging. If you've watched our other videos, you'll recognize the pcap in this directory is the one used in lab two of the snort3 install video. This time our run command is going to be a little bit different because we want snort to store our alerts in a JSON file where our elk container can access it. The command you'll run looks like snort q rule path, snort3 etsy rules, plugin path, snort3 lib, r eternal blue dot pcap, capital A, json, y, and then redirect the output to alerts.json. At this point, we have our initial alert data that we'll use with our elk container. Now, just exit the snort3 container by typing exit. At this point, you'll interact with the elk container by running interact elk.sh. Once in the elk container, navigate to temp alert share. This is a named volume that is shared between our two different Docker containers. Now we can send our logs to Elasticsearch with logstash with a command shown below. After that command, You'll have to wait a few seconds for Logstash to finish processing your data. You'll see a bunch of output, and once that stops, we can move on to the next step. Now we get to visualize our data. Open your browser and navigate to localhost colon 5601. Click the management icon on the left side of your screen, and then click index patterns under the Kibana heading, finally clicking create index pattern. In the index name box, type in logstash snort 3j and click next step. Now just set your time filter field name to I don't want to use the time filter and click create index pattern. 
Click the pencil icon to the right of B64 data. Set Format to String and Transform to B Base64 Decode. And click Save Field. Now click Create Index Pattern again in the top left corner of the main window. This time your index name is going to be Logstash Snort 3A. Click Next Step again and then use I don't want to use the time filter as your time filter field name. Click Create Index Pattern. Now you'll click the Scripted Fields tab that is toward the middle of the screen. Click Add Scripted Field, set the name to App Total Bytes, and set the script equal to the script shown below, and click Create Field. Now you can play around with the Discover, Visualize, and Dashboard icons on the left to view your data, make tables, and build a dashboard. We have a default dashboard you can use to start off before you're figuring out how to build your own. Just click Management, Saved Objects, Import, and then select Snort-JSON. There we go. Now you know how to set up and use an ELK stack for basic visualization of Snort Alert data. This can be very useful when tracking the state of your network in relation to Snort Alerts. Elk has a lot of neat features that are best found by playing with the various tabs to see how best to use that data for you. If you have any questions about Snort or anything else, make sure to check out our other videos or email us on the Snort users mailing list found at the link included below. Thanks again to Russ Combs for putting together a great how-to guide for setting up Snort logging with Elk, and thanks for watching.